بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وما بعد I begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator who is our sustainer our nourisher we thank him we praise him morning and evening and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to a straight path and make us among those who follow his commands day in and day out and make us among those who worship him the way he wants us to worship I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings upon his beloved prophet يا خاتم النبيين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم his family his companions and upon all those who believed in him and followed his sunna till the day of qiyamah to come amin ya rabbal alamin my dear brothers and sisters in islam in this dunya whatever things we see around us has been created with a purpose for example if you take this phone the phone has got a purpose of communicating with each other that has been the main purpose of this phone if you see the table the table has been here created for uh, using to you know keep some stuff or to uh, you know facilitate us to read the chair has been created to sit the computer has been created to process the documents so everything around us we see as being created with a purpose but those things might have an ancillary purpose as well for example the phone the main purpose is to communicate with each other through a voice call but they have other purposes such as downloading apps and uh, buy and sell or you know search for so many things and uh, you know entertainment all those stuff the chair has been created mainly for sitting but it can be used as a stool then laptop has been mainly pre- pre- prepared the purpose was to process document process information but it you can be used to browse the internet and uh, you know for entertainment also so everything has got a main purpose and it has got on the side the ancillary purposes too similarly allah subhanahu wa taala has created humans with a main purpose our purpose in this dunya is to worship allah subhanahu wa taala as allah says wama khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun allah has not created the humans and the jinns except for the purpose of worshiping him subhanahu wa taala so our purpose in this dunya is to worship allah azza wa jal but if we have other purposes also in this dunya when we come into this dunya we have a purpose we have to lead a life we have to eat we have to dress we have to sleep and we have to take care of so many other needs personal needs and social needs so in the process of fulfilling those needs we see humans we forget our main purpose and we get distracted and take the ancillary purposes as our main purpose and we forget allah subhanahu wa taala but allah azza wa jal says that the only purpose for which we are in this dunya is to worship allah subhanahu wa taala as allah azza wa jalla says in the quran there is no other purpose for which we are here as allah says afa hasibtum anna ma khalaqnakum abasa allah asks the questions to us do you think you have been created just like that without any purpose afa hasibtum do you think anna ma khalaqnakum that you have been created abasa without any purpose innakum and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in another place in surah al-qiyam allah says that we have to uh, uh, that you know ay utraka suda allah says that humans think that they will be let go just like that without any questioning without any uh, uh, without any reckoning of why you were in, sent in this dunya without any purpose you will be let go allah asks this question to us وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرُجَعُونَ Allah says, Do you, don't you think you will have to come back to me? Allah asks this question. أَفَحَسِّبُتُمْ أَنَّ مَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَبَسَمْ وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرُجَعُونَ Don't you think you will come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer that why you have been sent into this dunya? So, this purpose of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot complete properly the way Allah wants us to. 
worship him without knowing Allah Azza wa Jal. But instead we rather go after this dunya to fulfill the, the side purposes. But this dunya, whether we have to leave or the dunya will leave us, even if a person is being given the life of Nuh alayhi salam, 900 plus years, still he has to leave this dunya. There is no other way. So, instead of going after the side purposes, we have to go after the main purpose, which is to worship subhanahu wa ta'ala. That purpose we cannot achieve unless we know who Allah Azza wa Jal is. So in today's reminder, I'm just going to share some uh, incidents which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran as a reminder because this is only a reminder. We all know about this but it's only a reminder for everyone to reaffirm our faith, our belief. So few incidents in the Quran showing how the righteous people, how the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went through difficulty to knowing Allah Azza wa Jal. They had to go through a lot of struggle to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they can perfect their ibadah, their worship. Because without knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our worship is just a ritual. It is only we have tick mark that we worshipped. We finished our salah, we finished our zakat, we finished our hajj, we finished our siyam. It is only a check mark, a ritual we performed unless we know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. If we know who Allah Azza wa Jal is and then we worship Him, that worship has got its substance. It is essence we can feel. We can feel the sweetness in that worship, in that ibadah, that we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first incident is about, about Ibrahim alayhi salam, the great prophet, the father of all the prophets. Abul Ambiya and he's Khalilullah, the close intimate friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah talks about him, he says, Kanat Ummatun Wahida, he is a nation, uh, he was a nation by himself. Such a great personality. He is a great Nabi of Allah. He once wanted to know how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates, uh, gives life after the death. He said to Allah Azza wa Jal, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرِنِي كَيْفَ تُخْيِ الْمَوْتَى He said, Ya Rab, I just want to see how you give life to the dead. He being a prophet, he whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has saved him from the fire. And he asked Allah Azza wa Jal, Ya Rab, show me how you give life to the dead. Allah said, Kala awalam tu'min, don't you believe? Don't you believe, Ya Ibrahim, that I give life to the dead? And this is not a doubt, with a doubt he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he said, Kala bala, yes, Ya Rab, I believe in you. Walakin li etma'inna qalbi. I, yes, I believe, Ya Rab, but I just wanted. It, tranquility and you know peace and you know and a completeness in my heart so that if i see how you give life so i can become firm in that because this is one level next to the belief that a person goes beyond the belief level to the level of certainty yaqeen he just wants to see how allah so that he becomes so more yaqeen that Allah and how he gives life to the dead. He just wanted to see that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, okay, let me tell you. You have to go through some difficulty. That's what it is, you know, it is in the next steps. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, take four birds. Allah says, Qala fakhud arba'ata aminat tayr. Take four from the birds. Imagine it is not easy to take four birds. The birds are not readily available in the shelf to go and pick or it's not readily available in the table or they don't just come to you saying, take me. Catching four birds, you can't even run behind a hen, a chicken to catch it. You have to go and catch four birds. They fly, they run away. So difficult. It's not as easy as we read. It is so difficult. He has to go and catch four birds at this age 
imagine how difficult it is the birds are not readily available in his hand allah said catch four birds then allah says not only that more difficulty once you have to catch the birds the next difficult step is fasor hunna ilaik train them to come back to you when you call them imagine how difficult it is you train those birds that when you call you they have to come back to you it is not diff- even easy to train your child to listen to you when you call you have to come back the kids the kids they don't listen your employees they don't listen your friends they don't even though you close with them for so many years they don't listen to you all the time imagine the birds which don't don't have the aql they have to come back to you when you call them train them allah says train them subhanallah how difficult it is first is to catch the birds which is a difficult thing second more even more difficult thing is to train them when they call how much time it would have taken for him to catch and train them then allah says tum ma'duhunna ya'ti yakasaya and allah says kill them and slaughter them and mix them slaughter them all they make four parts of them and go and place on top of the mountains and allah says summa jal ala kulli jabalin min hunna juz'a go and keep them in four parts in four mountains imagine how difficult it is you have to go and take them climb the mountain there is no gondolas those time or there is no elevators uh, uh, you know movators those time he has to climb those mountains go and place them on top of them come back go on more mountain climb it top of it keep it come back to the valley go the third mountain climb it keep it come back down we get tired climbing our stairs at the home we once we go up we don't want to come down or once we go come down we don't want to go up we ask our children to get things up and down ibrahim alayhi salam had to go four mountains climb up and down four times keep them how much he had to go through the difficulty because he wanted to know about allah subhanahu wa taala how he gives life to the dead then what allah said summad uhun ya'ti yakasaya ya'ti nakasaya and call them they'll come to you and ibrahim alayhi salam called them after doing that then immediately they all came flying towards him subhanallah because he had trained them with allah's command allah gave them life they came flying back to them all these things happened why the next sentence subhanallah he had to catch four birds train them make them kill them and make them into four pieces four piles climb up and down four mountains to keep them and then call them after so much efforts he saw how allah azza wa jalla gave life to those dead birds they came alive kicking towards him then what he said this is what is the important sentence of the verse he said wa alamu anna allah azizun hakim i know now allah subhanahu wa taala is aziz and hakim to know these two qualities of allah subhanahu wa taala aziz and hakim he is mighty and he is wise he is powerful he is capable he is he is strong he is mighty and he is wise in his wisdom he can do whatever he wants he is capable of doing anything he can bring back life to the dead and he can bring dead to the life living he is capable of that to know these two things wa alam anna allah azizun hakim now i know allah subhanahu wa taala is aziz is mighty he is powerful he is strong and he is az- hakim wise in his wisdom he can tri- trial people he can give to people he can take from people to know this Ibrahim alayhi salam being a prophet had to go through so much of pain and 
struggle and difficulty how much are we struggling diff- going going through difficulties spending time and pain uh, to know allah subhanahu wa taala we don't even have to because allah has already given that in the quran about him how much effort are we putting to learn about allah subhanahu wa taala so it is not easy to know about allah azza wa jalla we have to go through the pain unless you know if you ask people they say oh i know about allah subhanahu wa taala he is aziz and hakim he is uh, latif and khabir he is alim and hakim he is sami and basir we can say that but how much depth of a knowledge of the meaning we know about each of those qualities and characteristics of allah subhanahu wa taala if we know these then we will have the sweetness in our ibadat when we work when we when we worship allah subhanahu wa taala when we know allah is aziz like how ibrahim alayhi salam has had understood then we we will not go through any uh, you know any stress or any anxiety when trials touches because we know allah is hakim in his wisdom he is testing me and there is khair in it or we need any difficulty comes you know allah subhanahu wa taala is in my back he is going to cover me he is going to protect me he is going to support me he is going to help me and everything is easy for him nothing is difficult for him so the next incident is about again is narrated in surah al baqara it's about a person who was traveling to through a city which was totally dead and ruined its roofs were on the ground that's what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says allah says aw kalladhi marra ala qaryatin wa hiya qawiyatun ala urushiha so he was passing by a, a, a town a city or a village which he found totally in sh- ruins it was destroyed and nobody was living and everybody uh, was dead and The, the roofs of these houses were on the ground that means it was totally destroyed and he was wondering how allah subhanahu wa taala qala anna yuhyi hadhihi allah ba'da mautiha he was wondering and saying to himself how allah subhanahu wa taala is going to give life to this dead city dead people dead things he is a believer that's why he says he believes in allah subhanahu wa taala but he had this doubt in his mind a shadow of a doubt passed through his mind how allah subhanahu wa taala is going to raise this city which is totally in shambles in totally in destruction is completely destroyed not a living thing in here how is allah is going to raise this back we might have this kind of a doubt in our in our minds even though it doesn't come out in our tongue sometimes sometimes we think we think about things is impossible how allah is going to do this not necessarily about giving life to the dead but some difficult situations we, we ourselves have a doubt how allah is going to bring this back to normalcy or how allah subhanahu wa taala is going to fix this the shadow of the doubt shouldn't be passing our mind and this person had a he was wondering not even doubting he didn't he was just wondering how allah is going to give life back to this dead city what happened immediately fa amatahu allah 100 aam subhanallah allah says fa amataha immediately the moment he thought he wondered allah gave him death not for a day or two or a month or a year Hundred years, miyata, am, thumma baasahu. Hundred years, and then he raised him back. He was dead for hundred years just to know about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How Allah is going to give life to the dead? He was made to die for hundred years. Not only that, when he raised back, Allah asked him, "Call." come la bis allah asked him how long you were in this situation how long you were slept or you were dead he asked allah asked him and he said qala la bis 
yawman aw ba'd yawm i was just in this situation like a day or a part of a day subhanallah the hundred years looked like him or a day or part of a day this is what's going to happen this is the life of the dunya the the the, the, the delights and the the decorations of this dunya we run after the life you live 70 years 80 100 years even we like as i said live like no alay salam 900 plus years it is going to be like a day or a part of a day allah says ka annahum yawma yarawnaha lam yalbasu illa ashiyatan aw duhaha duha the time of duha on the day of qiyamah people will be thinking the life amount of life they spent in this dunya is like a time of duha time in the morning between the sun uh, you know between fajr and the sunrise time the duha time that's what they will find this life's time the 70 80 90 years we spend in this dunya an hour like maximum an hour and a half for this dunya the life we are compromising the eternal life of akhirah with our actions of not uh, following the commands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah asked him how long you were in like this he said yawman aw ba'd yawm Allah says no look at look at your kala bala kala bala bist 100 am no you were in this situation for 100 years fanzur ila ta'amika wa sharabika lam yatasannah look at your food and your drink it is intact as it is he was looking at his food and his his provisions which he carried with him 100 years it didn't even you know it was intact as it is fresh as if it was made now wanzur ila himarik wali naj'alaka ayatan linnas and look at your donkey it's totally destroyed it's, it's become dust completely rotten bones you know just become rotten physical loss doesn't work for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you keep a bowl of cut fruits maybe within few hours it becomes to rot becomes to change colors that is a physical law the food gets on the table if you leave it overnight it start to smell it just starts to disintegrate allah subhanahu wa taala the physical loss doesn't work when allah says stay fresh it will stay fresh 100 years it didn't even rot it was as fresh the food and the drink whereas a donkey it was totally become dust there is no donkey there and allah said i made it an aya as a as a sign for you so allah will if allah wills the fire will not burn as for ibrahim alayhi salam the physical loss doesn't work for allah subhanahu wa taala there are so many examples in the quran then he said wanzur ila wanzur ila al idami kayfa nunshizuha thumma naqsuha lahma look at your donkey allah says how i am going to bring it back to life how i am going to cloth the flesh on its bones because you wanted to know how allah is going to give life back to this city look at your donkey in front of his eyes the donkey became alive with the slowly the 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 flesh was wrapping on the bones and the the donkey was alive and standing alive and kicking subhanallah in front of his eyes because allah wanted to show he had uh, uh, wonder in his mind how allah is going to bring back the dead to the life all these things why because he had to be in a state of death for 100 years and raised him back because he said finally qal a'lam anna allah ala kulli shay'in qadir subhanallah then that person said now i know in allah certainly allah subhanahu wa taala ala kulli shay'in qadir he has got the power over everything to know this one quality of allah azza wa jal this person had to die for 100 years subhanallah in allah ala kulli shay'in qadir we all know in allah ala kulli shay'in qadir we say this we recite this we believe in this 
but our actions doesn't reflect this in our life when a small trial comes we give up we go and seek help from other than allah subhanahu wa taala we start to worry we start to be anxious we are concerned about uh, we are angry at allah subhanahu wa taala naudu billah people are angry at allah azza wa jal because there was a trial which touched their life they are angry at they start to swear at allah subhanahu wa taala they don't believe that allah is ala kulli shay'in qadir and allah is aziz and hakim when a person knows these characteristics qualities of allah subhanahu wa taala when he stands in the salah when he says iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in you are the only one who worship we worship and you are the only one whom we ask help for we recite this in every salah 17 times a day minimum iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in but it doesn't hit us with its essence because we have not known allah subhanahu wa taala properly if a person knows allah azza wa jal what does it meant by aziz hakim alim qadir when he does the sujood to allah subhanahu wa taala he will find the sweetness in the sujood then the third incidence quickly we are running out of time is about the ashab al kahf you all know the story when the 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 companions of the cave they went into the cave in hiding and allah put them to sleep again 300 plus years they were in sleep we know all the story they were allah kept them alive protected them allah turned them the side to side so that they don't get bed sore allah gave them energy from solar energy properly adequate so that they get the vitamin d and allah put a dog in front of their cave entrance so that no one can enter inside 300 years 300 plus years they were in the situation then when they woke up from the sleep again the same thing how long some of them asked how long we have been sleeping is a day or a part of a day again for them 300 years but looking like a day or a part of a day then one of them went to the market to buy some bread and they were found they found out that these people are in the cave hiding for 300 plus years then what happened all these things allah wraps up by in the last verse saying wa kadhalik and they died allah gave them death after people coming to know of the story and everything allah gave them death they all of them died after rising back from the sleep then allah says wa kadhalika a'tharna alayhim that is how we caused them to be discovered why liya'lamu this is very important liya'lamu anna wa'ada allah haqq so that people can know wa'da of allah is promise of allah is true that allah can give rise give life to the dead and give death uh, the the life and he can give the dead to the live living and he can bring the living out of the dead allah is allah's promise is true and what not only that allah says wa anna wa anna saata la raiba fiha and so that they don't have any doubt in the day of sa the hour is going to come this is how allah is going to raise back everyone on the day of qiyamah when the the sa the time comes so that people can know to show the people that the promise of allah is true allah is true in his promise the quality of allah subhanahu wa taala and allah is going to gather everyone on the day of qiyamah allah had to make these people these seven companions of the cave to sleep for 300 plus years and they had to get back alive in front of everyone and they had to die again subhanallah they had to go through the difficulty to know what allah subhanahu wa taala so my brothers and sisters we have to spend time and effort to learn about allah subhanahu wa taala as we spend time and effort to learn the skills of the dunya but these are all not the primary objectives the primary objective is to know allah subhanahu wa taala and which we have to put our effort and time 
to know Allah Azza wa Jal. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are rightly guided and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who practice what we preach and and practice what we hear. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi